Welcome back to my channel, my friends. Today I am talking to you about vaginal odor, what to do about it and what not to do about it. Stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. Dr. Jen Lincoln here, board certified OBGYN. And today I'm talking about vaginal odor, vaginal discharge that just you think doesn't smell right, what you can do about it. I'm here for you today. Before I jump in, two things I wanna let you know. If you have not already subscribed or turn on the bell for this channel, go ahead and do it now if you want more conversations and more topics like this. The other thing I wanna tell you is that what I'm about to talk today is all about vaginal odor and discharge. And I go into way more detail in my book called Let's Talk About Down There, an OBGYN answers all your burning questions, get it? Without making you feel embarrassed for asking. And it's available now. And buy my book or don't, it's totally up to you. But the reason I'm telling you about it is that it has tons of evidence-based information that's quick and easy to digest and is accompanied by tons of awesome illustrations. So for example, we're talking about discharge and I have a, I have a chapter called Care and Curiosities for Down There. And my first one is, why am I always wet? Have you ever wondered? And I go into lots more detail about what normal discharge looks like. And then I'm gonna show you one more and then we'll get to the whole topic here. And here's what we're gonna be covering today. But if you like it in written form, how do I know if there's a problem with my discharge? Got you covered. You can get that at Amazon or wherever local bookstores, wherever books are sold. So first things first, let's talk about what a vagina is supposed to smell like. And you might think that is really basic and silly, but not everybody knows because lots of companies have made us think that our vaginas are supposed to smell like roses and gardenias and honeysuckle and all sorts of crazy things that vaginas are not supposed to smell like. Vaginas are supposed to smell like vaginas. But Dr. Lincoln, what does a vagina smell like? Funny you should ask. As a gynecologist, I have been in many, many exam rooms, hundreds, thousands of patients, and I can tell you that the normal smell of a vagina, it can vary. And so what I talk about is what's normal for you. So it is normal for a vagina and the discharge that comes out to have a light, sometimes a little bit musty, a light odor to it. It is not supposed to be odorless and it is not supposed to smell like body wash or soap. And so it can have a light odor. The normal color for discharge that comes out of the vagina associated with that odor should be clear to light white to white to even a little bit of a light creamy color and that can change both in amount and color and even consistency throughout your cycle as your hormones are changing. And so you may notice that your scent changes a little bit too. But Dr. Jen, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to talk about the odor. Okay, I've got you. So here is what we would consider not normal or a reason that we should, we should talk to each other. So if you are noticing a new scent that is very different for you, very strong, foul smelling, what we might say as a fishy odor, we wanna know about that. And if that discharge happens to be a different color like gray or green or clumpy, or if it's causing itching or burning, or if the skin around the outside of your vagina, that's what we call the vulva, if that's inflamed or red at all, or if you have any concerns, we want to know. Okay, so what is the first thing that you should do when you are like, Mm, I've got some vaginal odor here that I'm worried about. The first thing you should do is come see us and get a diagnosis because studies have actually shown that we are really bad at self-diagnosing, even when we've had issues before like yeast infections or bacterial vaginosis. Using over-the-counter products may seem really simple, but what we know is that if you're treating something and it's not the right infection and you're using the wrong medicine, you can end up with worse problems, side effects from those medications. So truly it's easier to talk to us. Here are some things that I'm gonna throw out there and we're gonna discuss whether or not you should try them. Douches, feminine washes, drinks to make your vagina taste a certain way, smoothies that say that they'll balance your discharge, garlic in the vagina, yoni pearls in the vagina, yoni steams, taking probiotics, taking baths with apple cider vinegar or with baking soda, and lastly, drinking more water. I want you to know that none of these are evidence-based and things that we recommend at this time. Now you may say, Dr. Jen, I have seen things out there. There are studies. I've heard this is good. My doctor told me probiotics were good, et cetera, et cetera. And what I want you to know is that none of these have been studied or the studies that have been done, none of them have shown any effect in what we consider good studies. I mean, right away when it comes to douches and feminine washes, I've covered that plenty of times and you can click the video top here in the card to talk about all of that. These things are just terrible for your vaginal pH. And not only will they make your odor worse, they can actually cause new issues and cause new infections. Things like eating yogurt or putting yogurt in your vagina, the studies are extremely small and extremely limited. And it doesn't make sense because the cultures that are present in yogurt are not the same kind of yeast cultures that are in your vagina. The same can be said of probiotics. Now there are some special populations where maybe a certain kind of probiotic may help some people, but this is something that you should be discussing with your doctor and potentially a vulvovaginal specialist before you even go down that path. And to talk about garlic in the vagina, it's true that there are some studies looking at the ingredients of garlic put in a capsule in 
around taking those to help with yeast infections. And that may be helpful, but we are not talking about just getting yourself a clove of garlic and shoving it up on there. I mean, garlic grows in dirt. And when you're putting that in your vagina, you're putting all the bacteria that's associated with it. Even if you wash it, you know you're not getting all of that off of that garlic. So you're definitely more likely to cause more harm than good. And this idea that you can drink something or eat enough of something to change the scent of your vagina. A lot of people have talked about drinking or eating pineapple and how is that going to work? How is the pineapple going to survive from your mouth to your stomach to your intestines? And then somehow the components of that are going to be concentrated enough in your vagina to cause some great shift that if you have an infection or it's going to somehow make you taste like a pina colada, it just, it, there's no basis in science. And it again gets back to this whole idea of why do you think you're supposed to smell like a pineapple? And where this comes from is just society making us think that vaginas are dirty and shameful. So the sooner we can break free of that that's shame and stigma, the sooner we can get back on track to realizing that vaginas are supposed to smell like vaginas. Now, if you have discharge and you've been cleared, there's no infection, what can you actually do to help with it if you just kind of don't like it or you feel like there's a bit much? Once you've been evaluated and we've been cleared, there's still some things that we can do. So you may have heard of some of these before, but these can actually help and they don't cause any harm. So wearing cotton underwear can help because that allows moisture to flow more freely than in other synthetic materials. And the same can be said for wearing looser clothes as opposed to tight fitting clothes. You may think that wearing a panty liner is good to deal with that discharge and you think that that might help wick away the odor and keep it out of your underwear, but the discharge can collect on the panty liner and can actually lead to more of an environment where more bacteria can grow and it can actually make get worse. So ditching the panty liners and just consider changing your underwear a couple times a day. And if you're using certain products, stop using them. If you're using soaps or body washes to clean your vagina or your vulva, remember nothing needs to get in there to clean it, but reevaluating what you're using. And once again, I've got you covered on what products I do recommend for care down there. I hope this has helped to answer some of your questions about what vaginal odor is normal, what isn't, what to use it to treat it, and especially what not to use to treat it. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them in my show notes. I've got tons of references and resources down there below. So feel free to check them out and go ahead and follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And like I said, if you need a good book, you like this kind of content, I've got you covered. And if you don't, that's okay. We've got tons of information here too. All right, everyone, stay safe out there. And until next time, bye-bye.